Julia M. Spencer, real estate investor, advisor, and enthusiast. And my website is www.juliamspencer.com. The M stands for money. And um, in this short video, I'm analyzing a specific property that one of my um, friends has had asked me to look at to see if it's a good deal to invest in. And this particular friend of mine is looking into flipping and he asked my advice on this property. So I'm going to go really quickly through this, these forms that he had sent me and to see um, what I thought of this deal. Now, overall, my analysis of this is that it, it's a it's a deal it's an okay deal but um, there's a little bit more information that needs to be found and also there's a couple things that I'm a little bit concerned about at this point so I would probably um, question some of this so let's look at it first he sent me basically a couple of files and, and namely he sent me four files and one of them was the first one was the comps and the comps is actually right here of this property in Chicago it looks like it's a four bedroom two bath 2100 square feet house built in 1899 so it's a very old house this is the list price this looks like a MLS listing or comps from some sort of MLS website or a realtor so that right away tells me that the property has been on the market for a while, which may mean that it's that it's been a, a stale product that's been sitting on the market for a while. So I, I don't know where he got this information from or if this is something he plugged into his own software. Um, my question would be, with comps, you have to be very careful analyzing comps. And it looks like um, the comps are divided into what has been sold, what is pending to be sold, what is active. And you can see this is all retail sales. Retail tells me that's that's full market price. There's no discount. There's no short sale. It's not a foreclosure. It's not anywhere where there's already some equity built into the property. It's basically retail price. Anybody and everybody can walk up and buy these properties for these prices, these ones below that are active. Um, that being said, it looks like all the prices are uh, somewhere between 295000 and all the way up to 749000 And it looks like they are sorted by price. Um, and so what, what we're looking at is mainly this days on the market, which means how many days did it took to sell these properties and it looks like these pending ones have been on the market forever like almost a year for these two to sell but it looks like the ones that have been sold have not said that long maybe a month for this one um, this one maybe two months a little bit more than two months and right around two to three months looks like on these um, but these ones that are being sold you can see the range of the days on the market is just really wide range. You have six six days and some of them have been sitting there forever. So um, this is really difficult. This is a really difficult analysis here because uh, it does, this doesn't tell me a trend of any kind. And it looks like also that this is the same property right here. So I'm not really understanding. This is the same address, same square footage. Um, looks like the days on the market are different here so I'm not sure I think I think this is what this tells me is that they had it on the market for 48 days and then they reduced the price and now it's been on the market for 21 more days for the same property so there's been a price reduction here on this really high-end one um, the other ones it looks like let's let's look at the square footage here first it looks like there's also a wide variety of when the houses were built. There's some really old ones. There's a new one. Um, the new one's been on the market too for almost three months. But it's really hard to tell from these comps how fast a property in this area would sell. 
It's also really hard to tell, and this is 10, 10 bedrooms. That's kind of weird. So it, it just looks like, if I look at the 295, this is what I would see is 295K, and I look, there's, there's, the one that's the closest is 2, 260, was on the market for 40 days. And the next one after that, 71 days. Um, these price, and then there's one that's even cheaper, 499K, that was on the market for a long time, really long time. Like seven months. So this is, um, these comps are all over the place. There is no trend here. So you can get lucky and sell your property in three months if it's priced right, or else it can sit forever like some of these. So this is, um, this, I would be scared of these comps. I, these comps don't tell me much information. Um, this, this is where you need to find out and go to a realtor and ask a realtor, is like, what do you think of these comps? Give me an analysis. Tell me what is, the no kidding expectation that I need to have for this property or even ask a realtor and they, they may or may not know this and may have information of this because they may have shown some of these houses. But look at these houses that have been on the market for very few days versus these ones that have been on the market forever and ask a realtor what are, are there any special features that the faster selling ones had? And then if you're going to flip in this area, you're going to want to make sure you put those features in there that people are looking for. So you don't want to belong to the long, long day groups here. You want to belong to the, you know, to the six day, or in this case, this is active retail. So you want to belong to this way, but it looks like for the ones that are sold or even are pending, 40 days is the, um, 40 days is the, the lowest amount of time that something has sat, but Again, this is hard to, to compare because it looks like it's a much, much bigger house. It has 3,149 square feet. Or, I'm sorry, it's 1,800 1, square feet. The lot is 3,149, so it's actually smaller. And, um, that's it. It's also cheaper. The square footage, dollars per square footage is 144. Well, as what we're looking at here is, a, is, um, in a different range. So, Anyway, this, this comp report doesn't tell me much. I would definitely talk to a realtor. Find somebody that's experienced in the area and has been working in the area for a long time because this, this raises some red flags to me because there's no trend here. So that's what I would say about this one. Um, the next file would be the property profile. So let's, let's just, whoops, let's just not download it, that's not what I wanted to do, but appropriate profiles right here. So this is a picture from Google Maps, presumably. Just from the picture, um, I, I don't know if this is a great area, but I can see that there is um, power lines going over the street, power lines coming from the street to the house, if this is a house. And there's like a really long cable running for the um, satellite dish here and it just looks like it doesn't look very it doesn't look like a really good neighborhood to me it doesn't look like a good neighborhood all the better neighborhoods usually have the power lines buried on the ground um, so the I mean this is an older area so and I don't know the Chicago market so this might be a very good area but these are some of the things that I'll look at also it looks like the, this picture may have been taken in the winter time maybe there i don't see anything greenery or grass or anything so it would definitely be useful to go to the property and look at it inside and outside and very and take some very detailed pictures and have it um, possibly even analyzed by a property inspector it costs about five hundred dollars to get an, a property inspector to come out there and give you a really good report of what you're looking at and also you could possibly get a realtor to give you a, an, a like a over, over the hand kind of like a provisional appraisal of what the property is actually worth. So this is um, obviously from the MLS, so you'd be paying retail. There's no equity already built in this, in this purchase. Um, this is all the information we already had. Looks like a very small lot, by the way. 
but I guess that's how it is over in the Chicago market. Um, two stories. The one thing with two stories is they're kind of more difficult to rehab a lot of times because you're dealing with two types of floors and I presume there's a basement also. And so I'm, I'm not familiar a lot with, with two story houses. Most of the houses that are, I own are one story and there's a little bit more difficulty with two story houses and, and rehabbing them simply because it's usually a taller house which you have to climb up on the roof and if you have to fix something it's it's just more difficult you need more equipment you need some scaffolding you need um any anything that's outside is more difficult than a two story house anyway so that that might raise the uh, rehab price more than what your estimate is um this right here that's humongous that's humongous that's a huge tax pro tax estimate i don't know where this information came from it's um this would be scary to me because if you you um are rehabbing obviously you go in for the quickest turnaround and i think from one of the other documents that i saw you t you take in about eight or nine months to rehab so take this number right here and divide this number by 12 and multiply it by the months that you think that your um your particular project is going to take and you're going to have to shell out that amount and in fact that's probably even going to be part of your closing cost in order for you to close on this house and, and hold it until it's sold and on top of that if i'm if i may just make that quick resi really quick calculation 20 27,660 Let's see, 27,660 divided by 12. That's how much your taxes are per month. That seems quite high. But multiply that by the eight months of holding time for the flipping project, you're out $18,000. I don't know if that was calculated into the profit margin that you calculated later. And that's something to definitely check on because I'm not really sure if that was part of it or not. But that's a huge cost right here. And obviously it goes up every month that there's a delay or some issues. Um, the other thing that I was going to say about that is I do not know um, what the time frame is of when this project, this flipping project, is supposed to begin. So, and I, I'm not familiar with the weather situation up there in Chicago, but there's just certain things that cannot be done in the winter time in Chicago. And um, I'm thinking of heavy snow and heavy cold weather spells and freezing temperatures. So it has to be very carefully planned when an offer is being made on this house. And the timeline has to be watched and basically um, policed very carefully because of that. Because if you have a delay all of a sudden, not because of anybody doing a bad job to your contractors or you yourself or any kind of anything else, the weather can can strike you really badly and and every month that is delayed this particular cost right here as long as um as well as the mortgage cost that you have to pay every month is is just going to kick you kick this whole project into a different dimension where where it's not profitable anymore um and yeah so i guess this amount here was was uh, calculated with these things so it also says it's an unfinished basement, so I'm not sure if the basement is calculated into the square footage. That's something I would ask for. Um, always, of course, always if you add square footage and the price stays the same in your remodeling, you have to kind of choose which things are you going to put most of your efforts into. And that makes it a cheaper house per square footage, which makes it more attractive for, for buyers to buy. So you always want to go for more space, less fanciness and more space when you're rehabbing in order to get the most profit. And we are six pages of this, so let's look at the other pages here. Um, I think there was a breakout of this ballpark estimate later on, so I'll look at that. Mortgage information, there's no information here yet. Um, by the way, if you're, if the lender is Bank of America and this is a bank owned property, Bank of America sometimes has some, um, loans where they put the construction estimate amount 
into the mortgage loan so they give you like an allowance for construction or for rehabbing so you may want to, you may want to ask them I know Wells Fargo is another one that does that some those big lenders have programs like that you have to ask your loan and processor person and um, see what what kinds of information they would need for that so that wouldn't and I don't know where you had expected to take the 121 thousand dollars from for the rehabbing for the repairs but it would be useful to inquire whether that can be calculated into the loan of purchase so it doesn't have to be laid out in front of in front of everything out, out of pocket I think that's all for these pages so let's close this form let's see what we have here what else we have here um, there's another one and that would be the comps repairs um, we looked at, I think we already looked at this, let me check again, oh yeah, that's just the one that we just looked at, yep, let me close that again, repair estimate, let's look at that next. Now, I've had a look at this repair estimate, and I apologize for this, um, taking so long to get back to you, but I wanted to verify with it, with the construction contractor specialist and another investor to see if these these numbers made sense and this is what we came up with we looked at these numbers very detailed because this is this is kind of what's going to make or break your deal overall i can tell you right now this repair estimate is actually pretty accurate it's pretty good from what i know think how much things cost in those areas there's a couple of things that are off though so um these are the things that i want you to look at um, specifically, and let me just look and see really quick. Um, and then we have also a couple of recommendations as well. When you look at, let's see, where was, oh yeah. So one of the things is replace stairs. I'm not really sure how many stairs there are. Is it just like three steps or is it the whole entire staircase? In the latter, the thousand dollars is is definitely under what it should cost. Um, let's see, let's just go through one by one. Windows, yeah, that's that's about right. For the cleanup landscaping yard, only five hundred dollars. Yeah, that could be right right. It depends on how big the actual grassy area is. I didn't see anything on the picture, so that would be something to check when you go to the property and look at it. Sand and refinish deck only, $200. That seems a little low. It's kind of, it's it's on the lower side. Interior painting only. That, you know, that's the kind of work that a lot of um, flippers sometimes do themselves, because it's not extremely difficult to paint. If you have the talent for it, and um, this is this is quite expensive. Hardwood flooring. One thing I wanted to say about if you're flipping a house, you're trying to impress a future buyer, obviously, because you want to sell it fast. But you also um, you also want to wager whether how much money you're going to spend on on fancy stuff like hardwood floors, or whether it might be a little bit cheaper to put in. Um, uh, not no, but um, laminate or some other flooring that's a little bit cheaper that might be a little bit more hardy and so this this might be a little bit overpriced um, and also this this price is actually kind of high as well I mean this is some really fancy hardwood flooring if you're paying seven dollars a square foot I think it, it would easily be available for about three dollars and plus the padding underneath it would run to about five but seven is kind of high and um, the other thing is because this is a very old house you may want to check and see if it already has hardwood flooring in there because most houses that was that were built in that time have hardwood underneath the carpet or whatever uh, other subfloor that was put in on top since then so it might be easier and much cheaper if you had discover the old original hardwood flooring and you would sand it and then um, refinish it, and that would be a lot cheaper than this amount right here. Um, carpet, not sure where you want to put carpet, but that's about right for the for the price for carpet. It's a little bit low, but it's okay. 
Um, ceramic floor tile in the bathrooms. Yeah, that seems a little overpriced, but I mean, with the labor, that's about right. Uh, shower stuff, shower meeting kitchen, that's about right. Home appliances, that's about right. By the way, you can get a, a kitchen much cheaper if you buy the cabinets and the countertops already pre-manufactured. You can go to any home appliance, I mean home improvement store, and they have cabinets and, that you can buy that fit most kitchens. So it depends on how, how fancy you want to get. You obviously want to wager and see what are people buying, and then, then you have to do that. And this is your first project, so you won't, wouldn't really know. And I'm going to tell you something about this first project later on, but kind of go, go with me, and I'm going to mention the kitchen thing a little bit later on. Uh, new construction framing. I'm not really sure what what that means. Is there an additional room that's being added or something is being replaced that's falling apart? I would I would inquire about this cost. And interior framing changes. This looks like you are changing the layout of the inside of the house, which is okay if you're um tending to a specific buyer or if the interior is just so outdated that it needs to be more opened up. Um, those, yeah, that, and that's what it seems like because it says non-load bearing. So basically, you're laying, you're you're changing the interior walls that are non non-load bearing um, to to make a different room and make a room bigger. Um, that seems to be quite expensive, quite honestly, and I'm not sure it's necessary. It just depends how the house looks inside. You would have to go inside and check um, the door, the exterior front door. That's kind of oh, that's just for the door with the hardware and dead. That seems kind of cheap. The door itself will run a little bit more than that. Um, baseboard trim, yeah, that's kind of okay. Stairs, we already talked about that. Got now the heating system and the AC system. I'm not really sure is there a need for an AC system in the Chicago area. And this is something you would know. Down here in the south where we live, we cannot live without AC. We turn our AC on in the middle of the winter sometimes. And so I definitely look into um, this as well as it's gas fired. So um, I don't know if there's a, an option to an option to shop around for this HVAC system. But the price looks about right. Plumbing. Plumbing seems about right. That seems a little high, but yeah, plumbing. That's you basically building a new house. And the electrical work seems about right as well. Demolition works for the dumpster. That's right. Dumpster rental. Construction permits. That's something I can't. I can't um, check. That's something you would have to check. If that's correct. So um, staging. Staging for kitchen. Yeah, that's. Staging, I just had to stage a house for um, for renting as a vacation rental. We ended up just leaving all the furniture in there and just rented the whole house with the furniture, the TVs, and the whole entire setup, the blankets, and it had it really nice. And it didn't cost $2,000. It actually cost nowhere near $2,000. And I don't know if that $2,000 actually includes the furniture or is it just rented furniture? So you you want to check about this two thousand dollar thing because I spent about three hundred dollars for staging, and um, maybe about five or six hundred dollars for the furniture plus some of the furniture that I had. And it looks like you're not even staging every room; you're just staging the living room and the one bedroom. So yeah, I mean overall, the total repair costs are reasonable for all of this. It just seems a lot of work. And my question to you would be, where is this money coming from? Is this money that you're getting a loan? Is this money that you and your partner already have that you're going to dump into this project for the 8 to 10 months or a year, however long that takes? That's my question. And then we'll, we'll get to why that matters in a bit. So let's see what other files I have not looked at yet for you because there was four. Um, I think deal analysis is the last one. We did look at this, this, and this. Let's see if we can um, look at this deal analysis. Let's see, it kind of like went into my finder. 
and let's see if I can just search for it because there it is. Okay, so here's the deal analysis. Um, so we're looking at a vacant property, 2,100 square feet, after repair value. This number, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, this number right here, I would be really concerned about, primarily because I don't trust those comps that you send me. Um, those comps need to be verified with a realtor, with several realtors, and it would be useful to talk to several realtors and don't tell them what the other one said and kind of try to make yourself a picture because everybody will tell you something a little bit different but if there's a trend in your area you're going to be able to see it and you're going to know whether this is a good price now at that particular price and I'm going to go back I'm going to go back to um, the actual um, Hopefully I can pull up the um, the actual comps, which is important to see, right next to each other. Um, I'm going to look at the comps, and if you see this price right here, 571k, at that price, the last property that's pending or has sold at that price or close to that price sat on the market for 285 days that's almost a, a year that's close to a year and that's maybe like nine months that's a long long time in addition that property is a little bit bigger and um it looks like the price per square footage was was quite high it was more in the higher area so uh, I would really be questioning this price. Um, so I'm not even sure where the value is at 295 purchase price 279 I guess you're making them a lower offer and you're estimating to hold it for six months. Um, I, I just don't think six months is a good number for this project. This project has to be a lot longer and because you're you got to count the time that it takes to rehab it plus the time it's on the market once it's rehabbed of course you can put a property on the market while you're still rehabbing it but you're not going to be able to get good um good offers while you're still working on it in addition um once a once a house has been on the market for more than two weeks it's, it's becoming a stale product any realtor will tell you this it will become a stale product because people have already looked at it. They're not going to look at it again. And the longer it sits on the market, the harder it is to sell. So you have to be really careful with this whole time of six months. It's, I think this number is way underestimated. Um, holding costs, annual property taxes. Um, this just doesn't seem right because didn't I see someplace else there that we had $30,000 property taxes per year, which just translated into a monthly amount of $2,300. So you, so this is, this is way off from what I have seen. Insurance costs, um, if that's, the insurance company tells you, then that's the number. Um, gas, water, electricity, uh, I can tell you for sure electricity is probably going to be more than that and gas is probably going to be more than that. It just depends which systems run off of gas and which ones on electricity. I can tell you here in the south, um, I had a house that where the um, heater was running off of gas, but the air conditioning was electricity. So in the summertime, our electricity bill was really high. In the wintertime, our gas bill was really high. So it just depends. You have to kind of time it. So in this case, you know, if, the, if that's a concern, you want to you want to try to schedule most of your rehabbing in the spring and fall when it's neither cold and neither hot or whatever the right time frame is for for that area. So I think this number is too low, and I think this number is way too low, and this number as a result is off, and this is definitely way off. So this this all has to be redone. Um, let's see, financing costs. This is the next first mortgage, three hundred ninety nine eight forty. I'm thinking what you're saying is that you're buying it for two ninety 
279 and you're adding the $120,000 to this, which is a repair cost. So that's, that's for starters, that's good. Um, this is your financing cost, your points. And first mortgage interest rate and cost is um, 12%. That's really, really high. I'm not sure where you're getting this percentage rate. Um, but right now the mortgage rates go for four to five percent, maybe five or maybe even quite a bit higher, maybe five or six. But twelve percent is hard money lenders. This is not even a bank. That's that's a high amount. And um, and thus I think this is maybe a little bit overstated. But you have to tell me a little bit where this twelve percent comes from because it, if this is a regular bank, it's a little bit high. Um, there's no second mortgage, there's none of this stuff. Um, I would, and you're saying total financing is four hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars for this project, and you're looking to sell at five seventy-one. And I think at the bottom somewhere there is a delta of this these two numbers, which is what I'm presuming you think your profit is going to be. Um, this once this is adjusted, of course, this number is going to go up, which makes the delta between this number and this number smaller, which makes your profit smaller. But let's keep looking at this deal analysis. Buying transaction costs, attorney fees, thousand bucks. That's about right. Title insurance, five hundred. But you, but you're gonna have to prepay taxes. So usually, what they will do, the mortgage companies will establish an escrow account for your um, property. That's where you put in prepaid taxes for up to a year sometimes, and also insurance. And also if you have any kind of other insurance requirements for that area, it's not just homeowner's insurance, but check to see if you're in a flood zone. I don't know how close it is to any kind of big water body. And also, um, what's the other thing? There is um, other considerations you have to... You have to check and see how how much how long do you have to prepay for. In addition, if you finance this huge amount right here of three hundred ninety nine thousand, it looks like that's not putting any money down on this mortgage. Which means if you finance a house that is twenty, that well, you're not putting down more more at or more than 20 percent you're going to have to pay pmi which is private mortgage insurance which runs about one percent i believe off your purchase price so you're going to have to calculate that in and that also goes into your escrow so there's a little bit more associated with these costs than there is um realtor fees six percent i would ask to negotiate that down especially on a rehab property and this is about right. Um, call home warranty. I don't know what this home warranty is because I don't know what you're war what you're putting a warranty on because you're replacing everything. So that would be my question. Station cost says one thousand five hundred here. Somewhere else I saw two thousand. And marketing cost. Not sure what that is. These are all numbers that probably would have to be explained. I'm not really sure how you got to these. Um, these latter ones, especially from home warranty down. I'm not sure what these all are and what this means. So this number, of course, also needs to be adjusted as I discussed. Okay, so you, so here we're going to, and I think this is the last page, yes. Here is the deal analyzer report. Net, estimated net profit and return on investment snapshot. Estimated net profit, $89,318,004. This is the delta between what I presume is this number and and which number? I'm trying to think. 89318 would be um, thinking it would be this number and this number added together it seems like let's make this quick calculation 427 plus 43 427 
plus. So what was it? 43. 43. And we're looking at selling it for 571. 71 minus 470. Just verifying the numbers here. Okay, so it's a, that's about what we're looking at. I'm, I'm off somewhere by about 11,000, but let's just think of it that way. So you basically took your financing costs plus your sell transaction costs, and it looks like all of these costs up here. So um, added the holding costs, buying transaction costs, selling transaction costs, plus your financing and then you expect to get this amount. Now, as I said, once you adjust all these numbers, this right here is gonna, this total number is gonna go up that you're subtracting from this, which makes this number go down. So you're, so you're saying the return on investment is 18.54%. Um, and that is off the total sales price that you're getting at the end of this project. So the after repair value, the sales price 571k, the purchase price 279, repair 120, financing 27, holding cost 3, buying transaction 7, so okay, so you basically are looking Okay, so purchase plus estimate repair cost, down payment required at closing, my capital committed, my analyst cash on cash return, and as cash on cash return, purchase plus real or right, 22.34%. Um, these numbers are, are nice calculations, and I'm going to be really cautious here. I can go sit and, and recalculate all these numbers and on paper they make total sense to me as well as the percentages, but you have to be really, really careful and make sure you put a really realistic eye on this project. First off, and see here's some of the things that are that I see. Um, first off, I think your expenses of holding, buying, selling, and financing are way undervalued. Second, I think your um, sales price here is questionable simply because these comps don't make sense to me, which makes this net profit number basically a, a wag. And, and this is a, a very big wag to make a mistake on. Secondly, I believe you said that you were in this project with a, with another investor, which means the two of you will split the profit in two. And let's make this calculation. It's 89,000. Let's just do, let's make it 89,000. 89,000 divided by 2 will give you each profit of 44,500. Now, I'm assuming both of you are gainfully employed and you're paying Uncle Sam a good tax amount. If you're to register $44,500 each in profit for that year, which I'm not even really sure that's going to happen, because of what I already discussed. But let's say you did get this amount. Uncle Sam is going to confiscate 33% of that right from the get-go. Let's say he only confiscates 30%, which means you get to keep 70%. So let's multiply that number times 0.7, which is your after-tax um, return, because you have to pay taxes on your capital gains. So each one of you is going to make $31,150 questionable 31k on this project and your holding time for this whole project is six months now let me tell you why this is this isn't that great of a deal um from just looking at the repair estimate and um go back to this repair estimate this is a huge amount of work this is a lot of work in addition to that, this isn't work where you can do this and then you can do that and you can do that and you can do all this at the same time. There's got to be like a project manager on side. Your general contractor is going to have to be really good at planning this out so they can do as many things as possible at the same time. And some of these things, and I can tell you while I'm looking at it, 
cannot, I'm going to turn off the sound, they cannot be done at the same time. They cannot be done at the same time. For example, you don't want to do painting while somebody's doing flooring. You want to do the painting before the flooring. You don't want to do, um, you, you want to put all your bathroom and plumbing and your electrical stuff in before you do any kind of um, flooring period. Um, framing stuff is the first thing that has to happen. So there, there's, there's a timeline associated with all this. And, and looking at this repair estimate, it only gives me half the picture. What I would want to see is in, in Microsoft Project or some other software where you can estimate or, or get an estimate from this particular um, general contractor how long each thing will take and which things are going to be done at what time on a day-to-day -day basis for those six months. Because if you have a bad contractor, what's going to happen is they're going to start the framing not understanding that they're responsible to work on the outside landscaping stuff at the same time. So they're going to do this, and then they're going to do that, and then they're going to do something else, and then they're going to realize, oh, we should have waited, and now we're going to do this. And so the whole thing is just going to stretch into forever. And if you have a good contractor, they will know how to do this. But if you have somebody that has been tasked to do this, all this work in six months, and um, they don't know how to do this, it's easily, easily going to go over time, over your time budget. It's going to go six, eight, ten months, or even longer. And unless you're with it, like, every day, and if you're, what you've told me is you work many hours and you have a full-time job, you're not going to be able to dedicate that much time to go and check on them and see what the status is. You're completely trusting this contractor to take care of this, so you... you you're, you're putting your project and your profit margin into the hands of somebody who you trust will do their job. And since you've never worked with these contractors, this would be a very risky endeavor for me, especially because so much money is involved. I, w I would, quite honestly, this particular repair estimate, this is a huge amount of work. Huge, huge amount of work. And I've done rehabs, and I've had old houses, and I've rehabbed them before. But I can tell you that this is this is crazy. This is going to take some serious time. Um, from me looking at this, if you have a good contractor, six months is the minimum amount of time of this. Minimum. It probably could even go longer. It just depends on weather and um, also how qualified the contractor is to handle all of this. And along with this repair estimate, I would ask for a detailed project plan of when they're going to do what. So you can hold them to that as well, not just to these prices. Um, so let's go back to this a little bit. Um, you're going to have to redo all these costs right here. The financing as well as holding, buying, and selling costs that all have to be redone. And this right here is a number I would check with the realtor. Um, anyway, so let's go back to this, because if this is actually the amount, then $31,150 is what you will have in vet, um, gotten in after-tax profit for the two of you, your um, your partner and you. Now, this is a six month, for six months, according to your estimate. Let's, let's make it eight months, just to go short, because I want to make sure that we can look at these numbers properly. So if we divide this number by 8, each one of you is going to make about $3,893.75 per month on this project. And um, I, I roughly, from just looking at the numbers, I don't think it's going to be that much. Just be, Once we adjust all the numbers, it's probably going to be half that much or less. And there's a lot of effort that's involved with you and a lot of worry for six to eight months. Um, it's still a good return, I would say, maybe two thousand dollars or two and a half or three thousand dollars. It's a good monthly return. Um, my question is, though, um, I would be really questioning because your margin is is just not very high. And you're, you're counting on getting this huge number to sell this house, and you're counting to sell it within six months. Now, if you count, let's, let's just say that that amount is correct, and you've gotten your net profit of $89,000 here. 
and it took you six months to remodel and let's say it took you according to these comps right here uh, let's let's give you six months to sell the house um, and even if you just sold it in three months but let's give it six months you you got to think of the worst case scenario so um, this right here if you I think the amount was 89,000 let's just do 89,000 divided by um, two, two investors, and let's divide that by 12 months. This would be, I'm sorry, let's start over. I got confused here. 89,000 divided by two investors, divide that by, let's give you, um, let's give you about six to eight months. Let's, let's give you eight months for rehabbing, and let's give you say about six months for selling mm, on and off so eight plus six would be 14 so your net gain would be and let's make sure I do this again 89,000 divided by two investors and divide that by eight plus six which is 14 months this is what you would make each month. And once you adjust the numbers, I can guarantee you this will be about half the numbers for um, financing. That's presuming that you're actually making that much money when you sell it. And that's also presuming that all your numbers are a little bit off and they need to be higher for selling. I just, I just don't see how this is worth it. You know, this isn't a very large amount to make per month. And, and the other thing is once you have tied your credit up for this huge amount because it looks like you're financing everything the actual house plus the repair into the mortgage this is probably the maximum amount that the banks will give you right then they're going to want to see some sort of return on this before they give you another loan for so for those six plus eight months or however however long you your holding period is you're not doing another project you're just doing one project and you're doing one huge project and if that one huge project goes um goes bad then you've potentially lost a lot of money and you're going to be eating up sitting eating, eating up mortgage and tax costs sitting on this house trying to waiting for it to sell um overall um as i had mentioned to you before this this is an okay deal I don't think it's a great deal and especially if you're a beginning flipper and real estate investor I don't think this is a this is a great deal now that being said I do understand that if you're looking in the area where you're looking that's just how much the house prices are there and you can't really you can't really look at anything else that would make any sense that would actually sell but I would really highly recommend that you start looking maybe in other areas or cheaper areas maybe some suburban areas where it might be a little bit cheaper to purchase property and then you can you can start small because what you're doing with this project you would be putting all your eggs like all your eggs in the same basket and on top of that you're putting your eggs together with your partner's eggs in that same basket which means there's potentially a huge blow up and everybody's money will be lost this is I mean, I'm a seasoned real estate investor and I've done flipping projects for many, many years, for 20 years now. Even at this point today, if you had asked me to go into a partnership with this project and I even had the money um, to invest in this, I would not go for this. And I, I would recommend that a private money lender not go for this project. And this is, I'm, I'm going to tell you really honestly, it's because I don't think it's a very great deal. I think this margin, these numbers, this number, and all of these numbers, they are not reflecting reality. And um, the information presented in the comps, as well as in the um, repair estimate, is not sufficiently there in order to make a determination. Um, another thing that you could do is to see if there had been in this area where you're looking where you get these comps from if there's any place here 
where people have done the same thing that you were trying to do? Were any of these houses um, fixer-uppers, rehab projects that people have bought and fixed up and sold? And get with those people, find those owners or former owners, and ask them for advice. And you could find these people through a good realtor. So um, overall, my um, I give the provisional thumbs down until the numbers are redone on this project and I'm sending you back to do more homework on comps analysis with the realtor with an actual person as well as redoing these numbers to reflect reality a little bit and um, this is like so that these numbers aren't and grabbed out of the air you know get with the tax authorities get the right tax numbers Get with the mortgage lenders, get the right numbers on the interest, get with the utility companies and ask them how much is a house like that cost in utilities. Ask the neighbors, you know, somebody will have better numbers for you because I think these numbers are are not good estimates. And so um be glad to look at this for you again as soon as um the numbers are changed a little bit and then we look at it again. But the way that it is right now, and even if these numbers are correct, this isn't a good enough deal where I would jump on it. And I would recommend you don't, you guys don't either, because I I don't think your experience level is enough yet to understand that um, these numbers are are not going to be a sure fit. And so if you have any kind of cost or time overruns, this number is going to be re greatly reduced. And it's not going to make it worth your effort to have so much risk involved for that many months, whether whether you're going to be able to sell this house or not. So that is my analysis. As always, for more information, my website is www.juliamspencer.com. The M stands for money. Sign up for my free newsletter. And happy investing! For your free guide to real estate investing, visit juliammspencer.com.